This video is a production of the Delaware Forest Service, working with you to conserve, protect, and enhance Delaware's forest resources. Every year, wildfires burn millions of acres of land across the United States. Although Delaware rarely experiences the dramatic crown fires typical in western states, wildfires do occur in Delaware's fields, forests, and marshes. These fires threaten personal property, wildlife, and human lives. Wildfires are very different from structural fires. While structural fire is usually confined within a building, wildfires travel along the ground. Wildfire behavior is difficult to predict, and under the right conditions, a wildfire can spread with alarming speed. This video was created to introduce structural firefighters to the firefighting techniques used to battle wildfire in Delaware. We will also explore the specialized wildfire equipment that makes a wildland firefighter's job more efficient and effective. The Delaware Forest Service has been fighting wildfires in Delaware since 1927. Together, we can help your fire company protect our state's precious resources. A fire needs three things to burn. Oxygen, heat, and fuel. These three ingredients make up the sides of what is known as the fire triangle. Without one of these elements, a fire cannot burn. For example, Structural firefighters remove heat from the fire triangle by cooling the burning structure with water. Unlike structural firefighting, water is usually not available to extinguish wildfires. Instead, wildland firefighting is centered on removing fuel from the fire triangle. Firefighters achieve this by using specialized wildland firefighting tools to create a firebreak. Just as the name suggests, a firebreak is created when fuel is removed from the path of an approaching fire. Fire cannot burn without fuel to feed the flames. The primary strategy of wildland firefighting is to surround the entire fire with a fire break, thereby depriving the fire of burnable material. Upon arriving at the site of a wildfire, firefighters must devise a plan to surround the fire with a fire break. Make use of natural fire breaks whenever possible, such as roads or bodies of water. By anchoring a fire break with a non-flammable geographic feature such as a roadway or a stream, you can save valuable time and energy. While engines are essential to structural firefighting, they are not usually very effective or practical when fighting wildfires. Instead, crews of firefighters armed with hand tools are the best defense against wildfire. Specialized tools are used to dig a fire break. These tools are used to remove all burnable organic material from the path of an approaching fire by exposing mineral soil which does not burn. The width of the break should be equal to one and a half times the approaching fire's flame length. For example, if a fire has a flame length of 12 inches, then the fire break should be 18 inches wide. If a fire break is not wide enough, the fire could jump the break and keep on traveling. Firefighters create most fire breaks using two invaluable tools, the Pulaski and the Wildland Firefighting Shovel. The Pulaski is an axe with a hoe opposite the axe blade. The hoe end is used to dig and remove topsoil. It also is useful for cutting roots, which can spread a fire underground and must therefore be removed. The axe end of the Pulaski is used to sever underground roots so they may be easily dug up. The axe end is also used to chop up shrubs, branches, and any other obstructions when digging a fire break. The Wildland Firefighter Shovel is different from other shovels in that it has two razor sharp edges which are used to slice into the ground to expose topsoil. Its sharp edges can also cut through small roots and branches. When digging fire line, it is critically important to toss or move all burnable debris into the green side of the fire break, or the side away from the fire. 
If you throw the fuel to the fireside, you are undermining your work by feeding the approaching fire, thereby increasing its strength and size. While the Pulaski and the shovel are the most commonly used tools on a wildfire, other tools can also be helpful, such as a council rake, which is used to clear away leaves and other small debris. Again, remember to rake the material to the green side of the fire break. A damper, or swatter, is used to help smother small patches of fire. Although they are called swatters, the tool is never used with a swatting motion because this would only help spread the flames. Instead, the swatter is lightly and slowly slid along the ground so the fire is deprived of oxygen. Another important tool is the portable water tank, known as a bladder bag. Although seldom used on a Delaware wildfire, water from a bladder bag can help cool and extinguish stubborn hot spots, such as a burning log. Finally, a drip torch is an essential wildland firefighting tool. Many people unfamiliar with wildland firefighting techniques wrongly believe that setting an additional fire with a drip torch is counterproductive. However, fighting fire with fire is an extremely effective way to combat wildfire. By consuming all the fuels on the ground ahead of the wildfire, when the two fires meet, there is no more fuel for either fire to continue burning. To understand how to safely use a backfire, it is essential to understand fire behavior. A large wildfire creates its own wind. The hottest part of the fire, known as the head, generates tremendous heat, which causes air above it to rise rapidly. This is called a convection column. When this happens, the fire will suck cooler air toward itself to keep burning. By lighting a small fire at the edge of a fire break, the fire will automatically be drawn towards the head of the fire by the flow of air rushing towards the convection column. This slow-moving fire, known as a backfire, consumes all the burnable material on the ground as it burns towards the head of the fire. As the backfire reaches the main fire, there is no more fuel left to sustain either fire. In effect, the fires burn each other out. A drip torch is easy to operate. Once lit, simply tip the torch upside down and walk along the edge inside the fire line, igniting fuel as you go. Be sure to use the right mixture of fuel to fill the torch. One part gasoline to three parts diesel fuel. When a wildfire grows too large or spreads too quickly to enclose it with a fire break using hand tools, it is time to call in a fire plow, another offering of the Delaware Forest Service. The State Forest Service owns and operates three fire plows, which are always on call to assist volunteer fire companies. A fire plow is essentially a bulldozer with a specialized plow on the back. This piece of equipment can create a fire break very rapidly. If the first respondents to a wildfire cannot quickly extinguish it, they should request a plow from the Forest Service. To avoid damage to fire engines and hoses, the plow must have easy access to the area. Although fire plows are extremely helpful, they cannot be used in every situation. For example, a plow cannot operate on wetlands or in areas of cultural or historical significance. Remember, a fire plow is not a replacement for hand crews. Weather has a dramatic impact on the way a wildfire burns. To understand how weather can affect wildfire, it is essential to have a basic knowledge of fire behavior. Wildfires are nearly always most active during the early afternoon. This is because during this time, Relative humidity levels typically are at their lowest for the day. A low relative humidity reading means that fuels have little to no moisture in them, meaning they are extremely flammable. Furthermore, the sun emits radiant energy in the form of microwaves, which preheat fuels on the ground. In the summer, high temperatures and low humidity 
often results in a wildfire spreading with high intensity. Just as early to late afternoon is the most dangerous time of day to fight wildfires, night is the least dangerous. Humidity levels usually rise in the evening, which helps to slow the spread of flames. Nonetheless, extreme care must be taken when working a fire line at night due to decreased visibility. Wildland firefighters always carry headlamps on their helmets to help them avoid tripping on exposed roots or other obstacles during night shifts. Ow, man! Very cold, help me! Delaware's outstanding fire community was built on teamwork. Remember that as with structural fires, there are other agencies available to lend a helping hand. The Delaware Forest Service has been battling wildfires in Delaware since 1927. Put our expertise to work for you. Upon request, the Delaware Forest Service equips volunteer fire companies with their own cache of wildland firefighting hand tools at no cost. In addition, our fire plows and brush trucks are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for on-site assistance. We also have cooperative agreements with other federal and state agencies for specialized assistance when needed. There are no charges for our assistance. This video only briefly touches upon wildland firefighting strategies in Delaware. For more detailed instruction, the Delaware Forest Service offers annual wildfire courses at the Delaware Fire School in Dover. These courses provide a wealth of information on the correct ways to fight wildfire. The courses also count towards the national certification requirements for those individuals interested in joining our crew of wildland firefighters. Our Wildland Fire Crew is a 20-member team dispatched nationally during the summer months to lend a hand on large wildfires, most often in the western United States. Members of our crew have fought fires in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Wyoming, South Dakota, Montana, Texas, Florida, and Virginia, and the list of states keeps growing. To learn more about our Wildland Fire Crew, or the services offered by the Delaware Forest Service, please call us at 302-698-4500. Fire is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. Turn to the Delaware Forest Service whenever wildfire strikes in Delaware. Together, we can keep our neighbors and their properties safe from the devastating effects of wildfire. <laughs>